Rouge et bleu. What's good, fam? It's your boy Dixon. Listen, recently I posted up something in regards to um, um, singers getting up and I'm um, um, thinking that, you know, like you have a program and you have like five different, six different artists and every artist think that they're going to change the atmosphere. Well, my DM was just popping like for the whole week. And I just said, you know what? Some people expose themselves. Some people just wanted to, you know, want to say that they were thinking the same thing and just, you know, just wanted to encourage me. But either way, I, I realized, you know what? There's so much that I, more I wanted to say that I didn't get a chance to say. So I decided I'm gonna do this top 10, to not top 10, not in any order, but just 10 things that musicians, artists, and singers, and those who are in the music ministry ought to know and not do. You gotta stop doing these things. It's very simple, straight to the point. And I'm gonna come right back and I'm gonna give you those 10 things. I hope you're ready for this, okay? Let's go. So let's get this thing going. All right, listen. I don't understand why singers have to think that their their job is to change the atmosphere. I decided that I don't want to go to another concert and every single artist wants to change the atmosphere. It's like it's a battle of the atmosphere changers. Come on, really? Really? Come on. But you know, it's overwhelming. It's really, really overwhelming. It can be so tiring, son. It can be a burden that every single artist wanna come up there and have a battle of the change the atmosphere. It's not a word, but you know, you understand what I'm trying to say. Number two, this is pretty much for my musicians and even some praise worship, praise and worship leaders. Please, when you're in church, take off the Bluetooth. Jesus is not gonna call you, he's not gonna feed you lyrics, he's not gonna tell you what song's gonna sing next like that. It doesn't work that way. So take the Bluetooth off things, really, really distracting. And it's annoying, really annoying. Number three, listen, if you're gonna go to somebody's church, ask for permission first before going and laying hands. I went to a concert one time and the person was singing, the next thing you know they just broke out and they started walking into the audience and laying hands on people. That is called out of order. God has placed a man or a woman over that church to guard the church. What's the right thing to do is if you're gonna do that, if God's called you to do that, you make sure that the pastor knows and he or she releases you to go and lay hands. Would you like anybody to come up and lay hands on you? Come on, ask for permission. Number four, and the same lines as that, if you go to an altar call, which is great, I don't think you should have a concert without an altar call. I believe that. But if you're going to do an altar call, it's good to not only ask permission, but to have someone who's recognized, either the pastor or a recognized leader, to stand with you as you do the altar call. Truth of the matter is, you're only there for that one night. And so after you leave, pastor have to deal with all the individuals will be there. So it's good for those who come to the altar will see a recognized leader that will come and receive those who give their hearts to the Lord. Because it's a wonderful thing, but it has to be done in decency and in order. Number five, listen, I don't know what it is. Maybe I didn't get the memo. Maybe it's something that I just didn't know. No one told me about it before. What makes musicians think that they're exempt from hearing the word of God? and they play really good, and the moment the word's gonna come forth, it's like a time for a bathroom break. Come on, musicians. If we're gonna be leaders, let's be leaders, man. God called you to play, yes, but you gotta receive as well. It's also good to sit down and hear what the Lord have to say through whoever is speaking that afternoon, morning, or night. Number six, musicians, come on. If we're in service and we're in a high time, Stop putting secular music into the songs. You don't think anybody could hear it? 
people do hear them, trust me. Some are still holding on to something that you can't let go of that easily. When you play it, it's like, oh my gosh. When you are playing and there's a move of God going on, you need to ask God to, to help you to be felt and not heard. We don't want to hear the jazz chords you're playing. We don't want to hear that 16th to 15th diminished to the 14th of the X sharp. Come on, really? We don't want to hear that. We want to hear what God has to say. And when you do all that stuff and you start playing up stuff that's, you know, playing all those crazy stuff, it really distracts. It's the, it does more distracting than help. It does. Number seven. This goes out to the female worship leaders. Listen. If you're going to lead worship and God has blessed you with a kabang bang and a kaboom boom, keep that in check. Because honestly, um, brothers want to come to church and they want to give God praise. But brothers, you know, sometimes can get distracted too. It doesn't mean that we're less of a man of God. Um, our eyes, our eyes, you know, our eyes can see the glory. I mean, things that, you know, that we don't want to see sometimes. So if you want to go up there, you want your bang bang and your boom boom. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to say what not to wear and what not to put on, but just keep it modest. There are some men who really want to reach God, who really want to jump in and worship. It gets really hard when kabang bang and kaboom boom all in all appears, like up here. Number eight. I've seen this many times. I did it before a long time ago, but, that's, but then as I matured, I, it's, I saw things totally different. When you, if you have to go sing someplace, groups, ministries, don't pray on the stage in front of everybody. Go someplace, come early to the event, find a place in the back, find a room in the back where you get together and you want to pray, you go ahead and pray there. But when you get on stage and you get up together, hey guys, I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna um, if it's, can we pray first? Lord God bless us, come on, really, pray before, in the back someplace. Nobody, you don't need to see you pray. Just get up there and do what God told you to do. And if you prepare, prepare, Number nine, listen, this was up to, and I feel sorry for them because, you know, I remember when I had my choir, you know, we had a lot of women in the choir, so we would go to engagements, and we'd go to engagements, and then we were there, and they would put us last on the program, and it would be hard sometimes, and it would be late, and they got to get on the bus, and drink, I understand all that, but if you have to go sing someplace, don't just sing and leave, it's, 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 it's a bad message, you sit up there, up there from time to time, and then when they call you to sing, you get up there, and you do your thing, and after you finish, you take it back, and you leave. Disrespectful to all the other ministers going to be on the program. Too disrespectful to the church. You know, it, 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 you would avoid a lot of talking. You would avoid pastors, you know, shouting you out on a microphone, even though you deserve it, you just walked out without saying anything. It's like, what's going on? That's what's going on. If you have to leave early, let the promoter ever invited to the program, let them know that you have to leave early. And let them know that you're going to you leave at a certain time, and then they let, let them work it out that way. Just don't sing and then leave right afterwards. It looks bad. And the, the number 10, listen, worship leaders, honestly, sometimes we have a bad week, we had a really tough week, and then we come to church, we don't want to be bullied. We don't want to be yelled at. We don't want to be, you know, you, we, we come there because sometimes we come to church because we're broken, we're, we're discouraged. We don't want to jump up. We don't want to look at our neighbors and say this. We don't want to raise our hands. We're tired. Don't get mad at us when we don't want to move. If we don't want to move, if we're just taking, taking what's going on, we're taking it in. Just do what God called you to do. Lead us to worship. Don't bully us into worship. If I sit down, don't yell at me because I'm sitting down and saying, What's going on? Oh, you don't want to praise God? You don't want to do this? You don't want to Are you serious? That's like the worst thing you could do. Oh my goodness. It's, it's really bad. And it can leave a bitter taste on those who are there. And then they won't receive you because they'll, 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 you don't beat them up with your words during worship. So those are the 10 things of the things that I want to share with you guys that are in ministry in no particular order. And I want you to always remember this. Performance before man can never compare to worship before God. When you're ministering, think of it's only to an audience of one. No matter if it's in front of 10 people or if it's in front of 10,000 people, you are ministering to an audience of one. If you have that in mind, God will use you in a powerful and a mighty way. So Brother Dixon, stay blessed and forever walk on the water. It's going down. It's going down.
Rouge et bleu.